Yeah, hello and welcome everyone to my talk about uh, Jackrabbit File Vault validation. Um, so a few words about myself. So my name is Conrad. I'm um, very passionate about open source, so therefore I'm pretty active in, in Apache. I'm a member of the project management committee of Apache Sling and Jackrabbit. And also I'm committer on ACSA in Commons, although I'm not working for Adobe, so I'm working at NetCentric. Um, so we are an implementation partner. Um, enough about myself. So what is actually Jackrabbit File Vault? Um, so you probably heard about that because it's the default packaging format for the JCR. Uh, that means whenever you deal with content packages, you deal with Jackrabbit, File Vault, and other hood, basically. Um, the serialization format um, is a little bit extended compared to standard JCR 2.0. So for example, what you see usually in the enhanced doc view files is that you add the type also for each property you add there, you serialize there. That allows to um, have no loss when you do um, deserialization, uh, sorry, serialization first and afterwards deserialization. So you can be sure that exactly the state you had before is afterwards restored into any arbitrary repository. Um, a little bit about the history of Jackrabbit file vault. So that um, is open source, but it has not always been open source. So initially it was um, developed at Adobe internally as closed source. It became open source in 2013. And finally, the Maven plugin, which is probably the one you're more in contact with than the uh, file vault under the hood, um, that became open source in 2017. Um, unfortunately, there was basically one maintainer, Toby uh, from Adobe, and he's now pretty busy with other projects, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, therefore there was not a lot of activity in the past until I picked, picked that up basically. Um, so what are the most notable changes in the more recent file vault versions? So there have been some considerable performance improvements in the Maven plugin. So in the past, it was always necessary to copy over code um, so uh, basically files from source to target before it was wrapped up in the zip package. And this is now no longer necessary. So basically the zip archive is being created out of the source files directly, which means usually the build time is much faster. So recently file vault as well as the according Maven plugin that has been migrated over to Git. Uh, that means it is even easier to contribute there. Um, so feel free to raise uh, pull requests on GitHub. It's available there. And then there has been some documentation updates. Um, yeah, also for historical reason, documentation has been a very big part of file vault. So whenever you noticed some um, kind of edge cases, you could never be sure whether that was intended behavior or whether that was just the bug you faced. Um, so I try to improve that documentation so that it's clear by reading the documentation whether you're actually facing a bug or, or you're seeing a feature of, of the tool. And um, last but not least, the validation capabilities I want to talk about um, in the following sections. Um, so you might ask yourself, so why is, is that necessary? So why the validation? Um, because packages are complex. You probably noticed that already because you ran into issues with uh, common packages. So just to give you some examples on what might go wrong. So one of the common errors is basically that you do have uncovered nodes. So nodes which are not listed or covered by filter XML rules. Um, the second thing which can go wrong is if you manually maintain the doc view XML and you're fiddling around with that, it's very easy to make some mistakes in it. Um, so um, the serialization format is not that easy to read and also quite a bit complex, I would say. Um, also pretty recently introduced, we heard that in several other talks already, is package types. So with package types, you have to consider 
additional restrictions, basically. And also um, a pretty common cause of issues is the installation order of packages, um, because um, in some cases it's important that the ancestor nodes are created first, because otherwise they may be created with the wrong node type. Um, a more concrete example is from ACSAM comments. If I do have time at the end, I will try to go into a little demo, uh, so show you a live demo of ACS comments today. Um, so one example that has been fixed already is the first one, which is the invalid filter XML. So that is um, basically containing a pattern, um, so um, which is not ending with a wildcard. So in most of the cases, I would say this is not deliberate because that would only cover the node which is called client lib author, but not any of those sub nodes. Um, so that would be the first issue in here. So the second issue is the mode attribute is not even supported on includes. So mode is only supported on root elements. Um, this, is, this is a real life example, which can easily happen if you copy paste things around. And this has not been validated in the past. So it was not noticed basically. Um, another issue was, and it is still the case that um, ACS AM Commons relies on ancestor nodes having a certain type. Um, further details are in that GitHub issue. If you're interested, I'm hopefully following up with a new issue um, nowadays because this one has been closed meanwhile. Um, some more examples. Um, of issues uh, from my previous experience uh, with content packages. Um, so this slide has um, on the top, um, it um, outlines how the repository looks like before the package import. Um, so you do have a content node and below that you do have a test node um, of type anti-unstructured and below that you do have a my property property um, with the value foo in it. And now you install a package which has the filter root content with the mode merge. So mode merge means that, um, yeah, uh, it should be merged basically the thing you, you install with the thing which is already there in the repository. So let's have a closer look at what is already um, in the package or what, what is in the package you wanna install. So this is, um, in, in my case, also below content test. So um, that is a node which does already exist in the repository. Um, but what I wanna add is a new property, which is called my property two with the value bar. And now what happens after you install that package is basically that you end up with a repository which has exactly the same state as before. So that is probably not what you have expected. And the reason for that is basically outlined um, in this box. So there is several bugs related to merges. Um, so the merge mode does not work um, on a level which is below the level of the dot content XML, which it would be the, the case here. So um, that is, um, still not fixed hopefully i can i can fix it um, at some day in, in the future um but it is validated nowadays um so you will get a notification in case you run into this issue and a third example um also again you do have content old child with a my property foo in it and then you want to um install a package which um overrides uh, content basically and um, within the content, uh, you do have two elements. So one is new child and uh, the other one is old child, which is an empty element. And now what happens is that the old child still has, after you install the package, the my property foo, although it hasn't been contained in the package. And the reason for that is that in your package, you do have an empty element and empty elements also do not behave like you probably would expect. Uh, further details here also in this uh, file vault issue. 
Um, so these are a few examples which are um, caught uh, with validation. Um, so you'll get a build, an error or warning, depending on how you configure the tool um, for, for these kind of issues. Um, apart from that, um, the um, file vault validator or the file vault ships with the following validators. So uh, first of all, it will validate the properties XML, whether this is uh, first of all, well-formed XML it doesn't go much deeper than that. So basically you can still provide arbitrary elements with arbitrary keys um, that is totally valid. Um, it may be that the keys do not have the intended behavior because basically that's an extensible format. So you can add your own keys for whatever purpose. For example, to leverage them in install hooks, that's totally valid. Um, next default validator would be Jackrabbit dependencies, which would check the package dependencies for overlapping filter rules. Um, that's an issue because um, if you have overlapping filter rules, then you probably did something wrong with your dependencies um, because it might depend on the order in which the dependencies are um, installed, whether you get one or the other as, as ancestor or not, basically. The third one is um, around the doc view format. And um, so this again will first check that the XML is well formed and it goes further than that. It will also um, check uh, that the format in it is valid um, according to the enhanced doc view format. So for example, if you give a type which is not valid, it will emit an error. Um, yeah, Jackrabbit merge limitations as well as Jackrabbit empty elements. This is the issue I just outlined in the previous slides. Um, next one is Jackrabbit filter, probably the most common cause of errors. You forget to include nodes in the filter XML, which you have included in your package. And also it will validate the filter XML against the schema. In this case, it's more strict because filter XML is pretty well defined. Um, I've not published the schema anywhere else, but um, by um, using those validators, that shouldn't be necessary really because um, yeah, it will emit errors during the build. Um, you also have JackRabbit node types. Um, that is a pretty, pretty recent addition. It does not work perfectly well. So there have been some bugs detected already. Thanks Stefan for, for helping here. I'm working on improving that. Um, the idea is that it checks for compliance with the primary and the mix and node types. Um, so in some cases, the JCR can be pretty restrictive in terms of what property names and types and also what child nodes you can actually add at a certain level. Um, for that, it's necessary that you do have a definition at hand. Um, all the validators run offline, so they don't need any, any uh, running repository. Um, so they rely here on CND files. Um, the CND file uh, includes all the namespaces and node types you're validating and we are providing them at GitHub. Um, hopefully in the future, they will be provided by Adobe as well. And the last default validator is the JackRabbit package type. Um, so um, around the package type rules, let me go a little bit more into detail here. Um, so there are basically three different um, package types being defined. And then there is some legacy mode, which is called mixed, which does not impose any restrictions. The other ones always impose some restrictions in terms of what content your package is supposed to contain. So for content, it's only supposed to um, contain parts of which are mutable also in AM as a cloud service. Um, so those parts are usually below conf and content. Um, it's not allowed to place any OGI configuration or bundles in there. And also it's not allowed to place any nested packages in there. Um, for application, it's similar, but um, only uh, the non-mutable part, sorry, there's a typo in here, only the non-mutable part are supposed to be um, placed inside those common packages. 
Um, and uh, then there is the container package, which is supposed to contain other packages, be it content packages or application packages. And also um, the rules have been a little bit relaxed to also allow nested container packages. So you can place a container package within another container package that's supported now as well. And also all the OSGI bundles and configurations are supposed to end up in the container package. Usually that one is called all. Um, there are some further rules um, initially being defined by the package type. So uh, one of those rules is that application packages are not supposed to have any complex filter rules. So includes or excludes are officially not allowed. Um, so uh, I think some of the reasons were already outlined in previous talks, um, but package types also um, give you some advantage in terms of they make your code easier to read um, because you're, you're forced to split them up between mutable and immutable parts. And also AM as a cloud service kind of relies on that. It can deal to a certain extent with mixed packages as well, but um, I'm not very percent sure whether that will, that will stay like that in the future. I guess Stefan mentioned that this is, was no longer supported already, so I'm not very percent sure on that. In any case, I would recommend to no longer rely on mixed, um, but to have a clear um, package typing enforced. And um, yeah, in the end, that will uh, then allow and ease the, the deployment, uh, particularly for AM as cloud service. Um, that feature is still new. So it might very well be that you run into some issues, some reported issues, which you consider false positive. So in any case, um, please look at the file tracker I'm sorry, at the issue tracker here in Jira and um, report any unreported issues there. In case you run into such false positives, it's possible to disable that on different levels. So either you can disable per message type because some validators emit different message types. Then you can disable a whole validator or as, as a real last resort, you can skip validation altogether. Um, because validation is active by default and it's bound uh, to the verify um, phase of, of Maven. Um, so it will be executed for every content package in case you have a recent um, file vault Maven plugin. Um, there's some validators which do not ship with file vault and for the reason that file vault only deals with the open source parts. AM is obviously not open source yet. I don't know if that will change in the future. Um, but um, AM still has some things which are worth to validate. And um, this is most prominently the content classification. So content classification is important because it gives you um, API um, visibility, or basically it states which resource types are supposed to be used in which form. Um, usage means here um, either you use it from content or you inherit from it, um, or you may even override it. Um, and uh, this is classified basically by leveraging mix and types in the repository. Um, and the idea is that this validator um, executes those validation at build time. And for that, it checks against the predefined map. So what we are providing at GitHub is um, not only the validator, but also predefined maps for both AEM 655 and AEM as a cloud service. Um, so usually that is pretty stable. So it doesn't change that often. And it, it also admits whether you, um, you're following basically the rules um, from Adobe or not. You can obviously configure um, the severity. Um, so you might either fail the build or just emit a warrant depending on your needs. <clears throat> the same could be used also for deprecated resource types. Um, deprecation is a little bit different because they don't leverage any, any mix in for that but instead um, a property which is called CQ deprecated 
This is also part of a dedicated map we are providing at GitHub. Um, so you can also check for usage of deprecated resource types. Um, same here, it might be that you run into some false positives. Um, so first of all, raise a ticket with the Adobe support um, because they should fix it in the annotations of the repository. And then second of all, I would like to keep the list up to date in GitHub as well. Um, so you know which false positives are already well known. And also there, it is possible to whitelist specific resource path patterns where you know, okay, this is a false positive, for example, or you deliberately allow usage of deprecated resource types in that area. Um, difference to Opal, obviously, um, a little bit biased. Um, so Opal does a similar thing. Um, but is architecturally different. Um, so hopefully the approach from firewall validation is faster because no repository is started during the, the actual validation. Um, so, and what is also different is that there is due to the low overhead, it supports also incremental build. I'll come to that in a sec. Um, hopefully it's a little bit less configuration, but I'm not 100% sure about that part. Um, um, and most probably you will run into more false positives. Um, hopefully that's going to change in the future. So please try it out and report bugs and false positives once you find them. Um, some outlook on what might happen in the future. Um, take it all with a, um, yeah, it's, it's not set in stone. Let's put it like that. So what I plan to publish is a validator for limitations of AEM as a cloud service. Then um, there is some fixes necessary for import modes, which are not replaced, so which is the default mode. So I already um, mentioned some of the issues with merge. And also um, it would be very helpful to have a validator for overlapping um, filter rules so that you can see if you have a more complex project um, with uh, multiple packages, you can immediately see whether you do have conflicting packages uh, within your package set. And um, feel free to contribute, um, feel free to join the mailing list and uh, follow the discussions there. And now seven minutes left. But then I would like to quickly jump into one very short demo and then we'll go to questions. So let me try to switch. So hopefully you can see now my Eclipse instance. So what you see in that Eclipse instance is a branch from ACSAM Commons, and that branch has the um, latest version of FileVault package Maven plugin integrated. So you see here the version 114. It has some custom settings regarding to validators. So this is mostly to reduce the um, default one, uh, default um, severity level to born. Um, also some exclusions to allow more complex application filter rules. And um, then for the node type validation, it's important that you reference a, um, the node type and namespace definitions in form of a CMD. Um, and then the AM content classification, which is obviously not part of the default validators. Um, so all that is being automatically downloaded by Maven um, because it's available as a uh, dependency from Maven Central. So let's have a closer look. So that is shocking, the number. <laughs> so 144 items um, being emitted uh, from that validation only in UI apps of ACS AM Commons. So let's have a closer look what, what um, might be a false positive in there. So let's quickly jump up to the first issue. So the first issue is definitely not a false positive because for example, you end up with that manifest MF really below the JCR root. So it will end up in the package, which is not intended. 
um, you shouldn't have that on, on that level, basically. And um, to give you some more examples. Um, so maybe this one is a good one. Um, so this is a um, dark view file. Uh, and the problem with that is it starts basically with a JCR content node below a CQ page. And you could say, okay, JCR content below a CQ page, that is allowed, isn't it? Um, you're right, it is allowed indeed. But the problem is that uh, the parent node might be a different one because the parent node is not covered by any filter rules. And this is the kind of edge cases which you should probably fix before you actually release the package because that might um, result in very weird um, behavior if you um, export that or install that package on an arbitrary repository where you don't know which nodes exist with which type in there. Um, I guess that's it, three minutes left. Let's quickly jump over to the question. <laughs> Um, and let's see what we have here. Um, so the first question, I have to find the right button here. To be honest, I don't live answer, type your answer here. So can, can you see it now? I guess so. So anyhow, the, the thing was, is a fixed the question was, is a fixed plan for the difference between the import modes and the behavior of the importer or the validator that I will highlight it? Um, I, I, yeah, so basically a fix is planned and we still have to figure out how the import mode should actually behave. Um, so first of all, it's a little bit of reverse engineering how it behaves right now and then um, specify the target goal and then see whether you can achieve the target goal without introducing any backwards compatibility issue. So this is complex and then moved it from release to release. So any help would be appreciated here. There's a branch for that already. Uh, feel free to give your comments there. Ah, uh, good. Uh, so for legacy compatibility, it wouldn't make sense to be able to relax or deactivate certain rules around the package types. Um, I specifically think of NASA installables and application packages, which all have legacy projects. Um, well, yes, it's possible. And um, so the question is always um, which, uh, yeah, which, which kind of um, relaxing, uh, rules you want to have, which kind of parameters you want to introduce. But uh, feel free to raise the issue and say which particular rule you want to disable for which reason. Uh, that's totally uh, possible. Um, how does it compare to Opal? I hopefully answered that. To be honest, I don't have too much experience with Opal. So um, it's more around um, yeah, what I've read. But um, yeah, as I said, Feel free to try both and whatever works best for you, just use that. Um, how does it figure out overlapping filter rules? Um, so for the dependencies, um, it is uh, basically uh, checking the filter XML of all dependencies and uh, can um, easily figure out the overlapping filter rules. Uh, for the rest, it's not yet implemented. So that will come in the future. Hopefully that analysis the question. Um, yeah, I guess that was it. If there are not any other questions, let's quickly see whether there's some comments in the conversation part. Uh, Jack, I would note that presumably you should have caught the previous examples as well. Uh, they weren't using JCR primary type instead of JCR primary. Sorry, um, I don't know, you were probably referring to one particular slide. Um, feel free to reach out to me directly and uh, point out my mistakes so that I can fix it before I upload the slides. 
Um, okay, then thanks a lot for attending. Um, thanks a lot uh, for all your questions. And I will be around and have fun with the remaining talks on the adapt too.